Hello YouTube, welcome back to another Alpha Star cast. I've got a bit of a silly joke for you on this one, so I'll do the intros first, get these out of the way. To the top right, I present to you the Red Zerg, the AI, the would-be Terminator, the one and only Alpha Star! And to the bottom left, the Blue Terran. I'll swap these on the overlay, actually. Whoop! There you go! The unknown Grandmaster, GRANDMASTER BLUE TERRAN! So a guy walks into a bar. And he walks up to the bartender and says, I'd like a glass of fruit punch, please. The bartender says, sure, no problem. But you gotta get in the back of the line. The guy sees no problem in that. Turns around. The bar is totally empty. There's no punch line. Hopefully, if you guys have been watching these Alpha Star games, you've been tolerating the bad jokes, but also perhaps enjoying the gameplay, watching Alpha Star come very, very close to mimicking humans, especially in their play style. Uh, obviously, I've been putting up these playlist links uh, of the whole Alpha Star cast. We've been covering so many of them. In fact, just to self brag, we might have some of the most coverage of Alpha Star on all of YouTube. And uh, honestly, I wouldn't be doing it without you guys. So just a little bit of a sappy thank you. Uh, it's been really cool seeing the views for this. It's a little sad knowing that you guys who watch these games won't probably watch like top tier Korean games they put out, but it is what it is and I'm having fun doing these. So as long as you guys are around and uh, liking the videos and all that, I'll keep pumping them out. So again, just a small bit of gratitude before we hop into the game as a thank you guys for uh, helping revive my poor dead YouTube channel. But getting into the game, Nothing too crazy out of our Terran. In fact, no proxies, a pretty fast expand, and with a Reaper coming out, we'll have all the scouting in the world necessary to see what's going on. I should note that because this is from New Repugnancy, this is at a time period right before Swarm Host Nidus Worm became really popular, but what we did still see a lot of at this time in the game were Roach Ravager pushes very early in, and I think that's part of why we're seeing a lot of extra scouting out of our Grandmaster player at the moment. Just a little worried about what might be coming. Now, it's a bit hard to tell what's scouted just yet. That's where the Reaper comes in afterwards. But the big thing, seeing what's going on with the work account in the main base, uh, nice saturation means there's no cost cutting for corners, no faster Roach Warren. And even without scouting that with the Reaper, this SCV got a lot of information. And in StarCraft 2, it is not just the information that you see, it's the information that you don't see. And right now, there's nothing to really concern our Terran. I don't feel like there's anything to cause any kind of alarms. In fact, just playing out here with the Reaper will probably... Hop up to the main at some point to peek around at what's going on, but back at home, very safe standard build. Factory coming out to follow this up, we're gonna have some reactors pumping out some extra units, and let's not forget that command center that came down so quick is finishing right about now. Faster orbital, more mules, good times for the Terran economy. For Alpha Star in this case, though, she's also playing pretty, well, much a macro game. Third base comes down, and while most human players might use this as a larva factory to pump additional units out and get really aggressive, that doesn't seem to be the case. There's no Roach Warren coming down, and, uh, you know, certainly speeds here done in a second. That Reaper just killed that Creep Tumor, by the way? That was a nice pickoff. That's a huge delay in timing, and I know we're a little bit in the way back machine. I should note that this isn't that long ago. I'm casting this game, by the way, on November 11th, so... You know, happy Remembrance Day or Veterans Day to everybody. But the time this game was played out, I don't know for sure, it was probably no more than like three months ago. This this is still pretty fresh and new, especially with Alpha Star hitting its Grand Master Streak long after the initial agents first debuted a long time ago. So, I, I this is a pretty recent-ish game, and ooh, proving my point further, we got a fusion core coming down out of our Terran. Now look, if you've watched my shameless attempts at the ladder, I've come uh, very close to beating some master level Korean senseless with some awful battlecruiser builds. I know, don't ever, don't ever do what I do. I play this game like garbage. But the point is, this is a pretty strong build that works on even some of the best players. So yes, this is at a grandmaster level and our grandmaster human doesn't know that this isn't a grandmaster fake robot. Uh, so, they'll apply normal tactics instead of something cheesy and weird, and oops, I have managed to speed this up somehow. Hold on, pause it!
I'm going to have to edit this part out. Sorry about that awkward hiccup, YouTube. Unfortunately, my hotkey for slowing things down broke some time ago, and uh, if I accidentally speed things up, <laughs> I would have to spoil some information. So, getting back on track, what I was talking about before with this battle cruiser. Uh, one of the big things about this, you know, I, I know a lot of you guys who watch these Alpha Star games, you're not super crazy hardcore StarCraft fans. Maybe you haven't seen battle cruisers in a while. One really big thing you need to know about the battle cruiser is that it can move and shoot nowadays. It's also got an instant teleport ability that lets it dodge most damage. So by investing in this, this isn't cheesy and weird. This is actually one of the most cost-effective units the Terran army has at its disposal. Yes, it's on paper a late game unit, but by rushing it out like this, you can do some pretty nasty harassment and control the early game with a unit that is so safe due to its instant teleport escape ability. So, you'll be more free to get your third base up and you won't have to deal with as much pressure. And, ooh, it's actually mech following this too. I didn't catch that second factory till just now. I was so enamored and distracted by the battlecruiser. At any rate, this battlecruiser coming out is not like the fastest rush of all time. There should be spore crawlers and queens. Uh, teleporting across the map instantly. Yeah, we're gonna see this pushed off, but the idea is that it's gonna keep pressure on the Zerg so the Zerg is either distracted and doesn't see the second attack or just keeps them busy from attacking the Terran while they set up their third. Luckily, Alpha Star was ready for this attack, anticipating it, and uh, the Lings in position catch the Hellions so the Battlecruiser gets some minimal damage done, but the Hellions get nothing really other than a few Lings, and that's what's really important because this would have been a base full of dead drones otherwise. The battlecruiser will chill out for a little bit of time, uh, waiting for its teleport ability to come off cooldown. And while battlecruisers do have the highest base armor in the game at three, they still take damage if there's enough queens in play. Granted, these queens are pretty much heading for half damage, but there's a lot of them, and that battlecruiser can't solo an entire Zerg army. I mean, just look at the Norad, am I right? <laughs> Sorry, that was a reference for the Super Brood War nerds out there. But uh, no investment in Yamato Cannon. So typically what we see Terran players do is they do two, maximum three battlecruisers, but oftentimes it's a follow-up build that's normal. So what would have been mech without a battlecruiser is still mech on course and on par. We've got Magfield Accelerator for the bonus damage against armored units. It's less conventional, and I do like seeing Bio a lot better paired with this. But make no mistake, the entire intention of the battlecruiser is just to be this early game distraction that keeps the Zerg from pressuring you while you build up that slow mech army. And there's a little supply block too, that doesn't help. But if you guys aren't familiar with mech builds out of Terran, you, you, it's not like Bio where you get to do a lot of constant harass. Sometimes you can with the Hellions if the player's not good enough to respond. Alpha Star clearly good enough to respond to the Hellions. But, you know, it's, it's one of those things where you're not going to be dropping a lot. You're looking to bulk up for a big army. You want to parade, push, you know, kite down with those Cyclones and Hellions. They're about mobility. Battlecruisers, too. But, oh my god, this is a full-blown attack at Alpha, Alpha Star. 90 supply in army alone, plus one armor is done to help reduce some of the damage coming in here. But there's a lot of queens coming as well. This third base absolutely must be evacuated. Now... Trying to cross the bile, I gotta give Alpha Star some props. Those were some good A for effort cross the biles to try and take out these battlecruisers. And this has distracted the Terran players so badly that they've actually only just started building this orbital, which they'll likely have to cancel to lift at this rate? I don't know, it's kinda hard to say. The queens are so far behind though, those transfuses are so late. Needed these transfuses about, you know, 11 Ravagers ago. This looks like our GM Terran should be able to hold this. Command Center's absolutely gonna die here! <laughs> So that was a fourth base, by the way, not a third base. That's uh, that's greed being punished, essentially. But I feel like it's getting a little bit chaotic because while the battlecruisers don't have a direct answer, there's also been no stopping the Zerg from advancing forward. Corrosive Biles landing on top of the siege tanks. Alpha Star with the best Corrosive Biles of its life still doesn't quite finish off the tanks, but through Queens and Ravagers takes out one of the battlecruisers. A tough defense to be had for sure. Our SCV count's getting lower and lower. Alpha Star's killed 40 workers through this attack, and our Terran player is actually now on the ropes. Yeah, they've got three CCs, but not, none but one are active. Cyclones doing what they can. Lock on helping a little bit. It should be noted lock ons don't get any bonus damage against Queens or Ravagers, but. It's still a long-range ability to take advantage of. High ground is absolutely key here. These Cyclones are like one shot from dead, but our Zerg player can't see him to kill him. But with about 100 chance fuses, this queen is like a goddamn cat! Nine lives up and nine lives down! I don't know how much she's got left in her. As all those transfuses are pretty much out of juice. Now dropping the Mule Hammer like crazy at this base is important. It's the only way our Terran player is going to start getting money because the natural base has been completely denied. Not killed, just lifted and pushed over, but with this attack creating 
so much pressure. You bet our Terran player is frustrated and maybe even a little bit annoyed. But it does look like between the Cyclones, the high ground, a little bit of derping from Alpha Star, they might just be able to uh, hold this. And I'm not going to try and upsell this, right? It's three, it's three bases-ish to four. Alpha Star's got a lot of drones to fall back on, but I don't feel like there's a real concrete follow-up to this out of Alpha Star. It just has to keep putting units forward and pressuring as hard as possible, because if this Cyclone count ever bulks up to critical mass, they're not going to have an answer. Roaches and Ravagers are not the counter to this. Ravagers are helping, but Roaches, as you can see here, when the lock-ons hit thanks to that Mayfield Accelerator, that's 800 damage over 15 seconds. It's melting anything with the armor tag on it. What happened to that battle cruiser, by the way? Oh, goes across the map. This is a brilliant move. This could sit at home all day, but the idea of causing some damage, stunting the economy, and stopping the amount of roaches flooding across the map is way more appealing for sure. Problem is, though, that battle cruiser is not getting nearly enough damage done, and this defense is really starting to crack. These cyclones, though, with one health, one bar of health apiece, are starting to hold this. And holy crap, is our Terran still out? Well, still outnumbered 80 to 29 on the supply. Their supply blocked with the depots going down. This doesn't look better for our Terran, but they might just hold this initial wave. Uh, Cyclone starting to go down to the links doesn't help the situation. The auto attacks here don't really matter. It's all about the lock-ons. The lock-ons shred these roaches. That's the kiting coming into full attack. Moving and shooting is such a hard thing to deal with. And Alpha Star's losing out on a lot of these roaches. But remember, our human players lost out on everything else they have to fight with. That battle cruiser desperately teleports home, not only to stay alive, but to be part of the defense that is pretty much non-existent. This doesn't look good for our Terran. I can't believe Alpha Star's busting chops like this. More mules dropped over there. Desperate for money. 16 workers taps out. Ladies and gentlemen, another Alpha Star victory with Zerg, no less. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, consider hitting that like button. Help me game the YouTube algorithm by maybe commenting down below. And definitely make sure to subscribe to the channel for more. I'll see you guys on the next one.